Thank you for getting up and joining us. Today is Monday the 18th of January and we're continuing our journey through Esther. So today I'm going to be looking at a bit of a passage from Esther chapter 6. Then we'll have a bit of a recap and then we'll think about what we've just read. So here we go. Esther chapter 6. That night the king could not sleep. So he ordered the book of the Chronicles, the record of his reign, to be brought in and read to him. It was found recorded there that Mordecai had exposed Big Thana and Teresh, two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway, who had conspired to assassinate the king. What honour and recognition has Mordecai received for this, the king asked. Nothing has been done for him, his attendants answered. The king said, who is in the court? Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the palace to speak to the king about hanging Mordecai on the gallows he had erected for him. His attendants answered, Haman is standing in the court. Bring him in, the king ordered. When Haman entered, the king asked him what should be done for the man the king delights to honour. Now Haman thought to himself, who is there that the king would rather honour than me? So he answered the king, for that man the king designs, des delights to honour, <laughs> have them bring a royal robe the king has worn and a horse the king has ridden, one with a royal crest placed on his head. Then let the robe and horse be entrusted to one of the king's most noble princes. Let them robe the man the king delights to honour and lead him on the horse through the city streets, proclaiming before him, this is what is done for the man the king delights to honour. There you go. I love the idea of um, Haman turning up while the king is still in his pyjamas, but that's not what we're going to explore this morning. I think the timeline is, is condensed. So, two weeks ago we started looking at Esther. And I think what we should do is have a bit of a recap on where we are, because there's a couple of themes that have come up regularly. And some of the things were touched on by Al in the service yesterday. The preach of that is available online if you'd like to go and have a look. So the Jews are on exile in Susa, the capital of the Persian Empire, one of the capitals. And um, following the king's displeasure at Queen Vashti, she's removed. And to find a new queen, the king decides to have a beauty contest. And uh, Esther is found to be the most beautiful woman in the kingdom and is made queen. Um, now, at this point, Esther keeps her Jewish identity secret because she's been instructed to by Mordecai. And then, as referred to in the reading today, Mordecai foils an attempt on the king's life. So two of his most trusted servants are planning to assassinate him. Mordecai finds out about it, tells Esther. Esther tells the king. The king lives. Um, two guys are um, done away with and uh, but then after this happens there's no recognition for Mordecai but we're told that Haman the Agagite and that was covered in an earlier talk was made pretty much second in command of the entire kingdom and he's quite pleased with this and, um, and one of the things he likes to have done is as he walks along people should bow to him because he is now quite important Mordecai refuses and, uh, and it turns out that Haman finds out that Mordecai is a Jew so Haman concocts his plan where he's going to have all of the Jews in the kingdom assassinated goes out by royal decree More, Haman rubs his hands we're all, all looking good so far for Haman so Mordecai then has a conversation with his niece Esther about saving the Jews he says what if you were made queen for such a time as this. You know, you need to help us. So she instructs the Jews to, um, to fast and she said, and goes and invites the king to a banquet. Now to approach the king without being invited could invite death, but that's what she does. And the king and Haman come to Esther and they have a banquet. And the king says, what would you like? And she says, come back tomorrow for another banquet and I'll tell you. So um, presumably this is quite a good banquet, Haman's in very good spirits. He goes home and he says, Woohoo, I've got lots of sons. Woohoo, I've got great wealth. Woohoo, I am the second most powerful man in the most important kingdom at this time. 
And uh, he says, but I'm frustrated with Mordecai the Jew because this one man um, won't bow down to me. And he sits there and with his wife and his friends, we're told they concoct a plan so that they're going to assassinate um, Mordecai. But you can't really do that. So he's, what he's going to do, he's going to get the king's permission to have Mordecai killed. And that's where we've got to. So in summary, for the Jewish people, all but one of them are going to be killed by royal decree. And one of them's about to be killed by royal decree, but in a different way. It's all looking rather bleak. And then at this moment, where we get to today, suddenly the king can't sleep. What a coincidence. And not only that, he can't sleep, but he says, I need something really soporific. How about we read through the recent court history to find out what's going on and what's important. But rather than put him back to sleep, the court history reminds him that Mordecai has saved his life and not yet been rewarded for it. So he jumps up, presumably, and thinks, I need to do something about this. And then who should be at the front door but his most trusted advisor, Haman? And then there's this wonderful passage where they have this conversation where they're talking cross purposes. So Haman, when the king says, who, how can I reward this man, thinks, well, hey, the king wants to reward me for being a brilliant prime minister. And the king thinks Haman is making good suggestions for how he can reward someone. So Haman says, well, what you need to do is give him one of your royal robes and one of your best horses and have one of your princes lead this man that's going to be honoured around the city, proclaiming just how wonderful he is. Because Haman thinks that it's going to be him that's led around the city by one of the king's princes. And the king is thinking, hey, this is a brilliant idea. I can have Mordecai given my cloak and given my horse and led around the city and everyone can know that this Jew who's here in exile is um, saved my life and I'd like to honour him. And neither of them actually says what the other one is thinking because they both don't realise that they're talking cross purposes. They have this wonderful conversation here. It really is worth reading. So Mordecai is to be paraded around the streets and uh, the king, without knowing it, is going to be elevating one of the Jewish leaders to a very high status within his kingdom. So it comes back again here, there's this, there's this, just by coincidence, the king happened to be a bad sleeper. And just by coincidence, we have this cross-purpose conversation. And then the question is, so who's in control of this? And why did the king just have a big bout of insomnia after all of these things have happened? And why is it that when the king had his bout of insomnia, he said, bring me my royal records. Let's go over some recent history again. So let's look at it from a slightly different way. So Mordecai is going to be blessed by Xerxes, and it's this night that's just happened that's kind of pivotal in the whole story and turning it around from looking like a bit of doom and gloom for the whole of the Jewish people who, by royal decree, are going to be killed next summer, next Easter, sorry, April-ish. And, uh, and then Haman had this plan, and then we have the court readings. Now, two weeks ago, when we started... Esther, we had a quick flick into Jeremiah 29, and this was read again by Al yesterday about blessing the place you are in. And then I'd remind you as well about when we were going through Colossians last year, Colossians 3, about doing everything as though doing it for the Lord. So work with all your heart work as though working for the Lord, not for your human masters, since you know you will re receive an inheritance as your reward. What we're working towards in whatever we're doing is not blessing ourselves, but we're working so that so that God is blessed, so that God is glorified. And Mordecai here could have kept quiet because, frankly, he was a Jew in exile. He could have not said anything about the assassination attempt on the king, but he chose to spoke. He blessed the country he was in. And then out of that by him telling Esther, Esther telling the king, and then now some time later, the king not sleeping and being given this whole, well, hold on a minute, you haven't rewarded this man. Out of that, 
the king wants to honour him. So Xerxes was not a Jew and he did not recall, um, he didn't particularly favour them and it's not recorded that he liked them at the time. But he acts now. And if he hadn't had that bad night's sleep, the rest of this book will be very, very different. Mordecai says to Esther, if you don't act, God will. Esther does act, but it looks like God acts as well, just to make sure the timeline, the Jewish line continues, his people are protected, and then we'll see in the rest of the story how it unfolds. So again, I'd make, ask you, where do we attribute all these coincidences? Thank you.